What is going on guys? Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to learn how to work with thread pools in Python. So let us get right into it. Alright, so we're going to talk about using thread pools in Python today, uh, which is an alternative to using multiple individual threads, independent threads, uh, which is the classical way of multi-threading in Python. So basically importing uh, the threading module, then importing maybe time to the later function, then defining a simple worker function where we do something, let's add the comment, do something, time sleep, let's say it takes two seconds, and then we print something at the end, for example, done. And this worker function can now be assigned to a thread, so we can say t1 equals threading.thread with a target function of worker, and then we can say t1.start, and we can do that for multiple different threads. So we can say here t2, t3, t4, t5, and t6 here as well. So those are all independent individual threads that do not belong to a group, to a category, to a list, to a collection, to anything, to a pool. It's just individual independent threads. That's a classic way of multi-threading, but we now also can use thread pools in Python. And in order to use thread pools, what we do is we say from concurrent dot futures, we want to import the thread pool executor. And of course, we also want to import time because I'm not going to come up with an algorithm that takes time here. I'm just going to use the sleep function because I'm lazy. And here we're going to define again the worker function. This time it's going to take a number parameter. And what it's going to do is it's going to just say print hello world or something like that. Uh, or maybe let's do it. Let's do something more meaningful. Let's do calculating the result for number. And then we can use number here. And then we're going to say time sleep, we're going to pretend like our function is working time sleep two, and then we're going to say at the end, return number squared. This will happen almost in an instant. So we're going to pretend like we work here, whatever. And now instead of having multiple individual threads, we're going to create a thread pool. So we're going to say pool equals thread pool executor. Uh, and here we pass now the number of max workers. Let's say we want to start with two, we want to have two individual threads here. And uh, what we can now do is we can submit tasks to that pool. So we basically say, um, take a worker function and submit the task with the following parameters. So we say pool dot submit, and we want to target the worker function and we want to submit the number seven, for example, whatever. The result can now be saved in a variable, it can be stored in a variable, for example, uh, work one, we can say or result one, call it whatever you want. So this is now a future object. I'm not sure what it's called, to be honest, uh, if it's a future or promise or whatever. But it's essentially an object that uh, is asynchronous. So I can say dot result to get the result to make the program wait for the result and to get the result. But I can also uh, call the done function immediately to see if the uh, if this task was already done, if this task is already finished. So let's add a bunch of those. Let's say we have work one, work two, work three, work four, work five. And we want to submit here worker seven, worker nine, worker five, worker five, and worker, I don't know, eight. And now let's see what happens if I just run this code here. So you can see calculating the result for number seven, calculating the result for number nine, calculating the result for number five, five, eight, whatever. So you can see that they were executed basically two at a time because we have only two threads. So what happens if we increase the number here to five, I now interrupted here. Um, if I increase the number to five, all of them are done immediately, as you can see here. So they happen concurrently, they don't wait. Because what happens when we have two is the first two are submitted, the pool assigns the work to the uh, to the two threads, and then we have no more threats. So we submit, but there's no threats uh, that is available. So we wait for those to finish, we take the thread that is now finished, and we assign new work to those uh, two threads. That's the idea. If, if we have five, we don't need to do that because we can just use five threads. So in order to now get the results of all these tasks, what we need to do is we need to call the result method. So for example, I can print down here work three dot result. And this will give me the result of the task three, which is five squared. So 25. And you can see here 25 
is what I get. Now, one thing that you need to know about this function here is that it waits for the result. So for example, if I don't have this function here and I print um, hello world, for example, you will see that hello world is printed immediately here, right in between all these tasks. So whatever comes after those uh, submissions here is still in the main thread executed right afterwards. So those are just submissions. The threat are work. The threats are working in their own threads, but the main thread is still running. So everything that comes afterwards is executed immediately. So when I have a bunch of hello world statements here, they're printed all immediately. We don't wait for the tasks to finish. We're not uh, doing this in a single thread here. However, you will see, or you already saw, that when we do result, that is not the case. We don't see the result immediately. We see the result when it's available. So we wait for work three to finish, for this task to finish, uh, and then we get the result. And you will see also that if I have hello world down here, all of those will not be printed um, before work three finished. So we will get the result and then we will get all the hello world statements. Um, so this function here kills the asynchronous behavior, you could say, or the, the multi-threading. It's basically awaiting the result. So you cannot run this to get the result. Uh, if there is no result, then you just continue, but this will wait for the result. It will wait until we get a result from work three. Um, however, there's a function that we can use here asynchronously, basically checking if this package is finished or not. So we can say here, work three dot done. And this done function here tells us either true or false. If in that second that we execute the line, the package is finished. So here it is not finished right afterwards. But if for example, I wait for five seconds, it's going to be true because after five seconds, four seconds have also passed, uh, which means that this package will be or this task will be finished. So one thing that we could do if we want to prevent uh, the waiting for a result is we could just say, uh, if, for example, work three dot done, if that is the case, print work three dot result. So we, we don't have to wait for it because if we get to the result, it is already done. So we can just get the result. We don't have to wait for it. And uh, in this case, it will return false because we execute it immediately after that. So let's do a time sleep five and repeat the same code. And then you're going to see that we are going to get the result from work three. There you go. So the first time did not work. Now maybe we want to see that it doesn't work. No results yet. So you can see no results yet immediately printed. However, if we wait a little bit, we can see 25 here is the result. So one last thing I want to show you here is shutting down a pool because we can constantly add new things to the pool. I can copy this line here and I can continue to add new work to the pool. Six, seven, eight, and nine. And then uh, basically it will go on and on and on as long as I add new stuff. However, maybe we want to shut down the pool, say, okay, we don't want to do any more work. We don't accept any more work. So what we can do here is we can say pool dot shut down. Now shut down does not mean that we'll abort all threats. We will still keep everything running. Everything that is already ru uh, running will be finished. All the calculations will be finished. Um, however, we're not going to accept new uh, submissions. So if I do this, still everything is going to be executed. You will see that uh, we're still going to add six, seven, eight here and also nine. So we're going to have the number eight four times without any problems and the calculations will be done as well. But if I want to say, for example, here work 10 equals pool dot submit worker and again eight, you will see that our program will crash. It will give us an exception because the pool is already shut down. We cannot add more tasks. So those are going to be executed but then we get a runtime error, cannot schedule new futures after shutdown. So once you shut down the pool, everything that's running will be uh, finished, but afterwards we don't accept any new submissions. And this is how you work with thread pools in Python.
So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.